Well, Dad and I spent two years going up and down every street, marking off every allotment, every house number, every place in the electorate. So what frustrates Terry Geiger about Queensland's latest revelations of electoral here, fraud is that no one here, wanted to know about it when he believes he proved it was happening right. 11 okay, so years ago. Well, when four people enrolled at number eight Richmond Street, I checked against my map and discovered that, in fact, it was the car park of the Kentucky Fried Chicken stand. As it is today. That's correct. Mr Geiger was the Queensland Liberal MP for the Brisbane seat of Stafford until 1989. Early into his term, suspecting bogus enrolments, Terry and his dad walked the entire electorate, checking the location of every residence in every street. Now, you always suspected, didn't you, that this was just the tip of the iceberg? Oh, yes, there was something funny going on with my role and I determined that the only way I could uh, prevent anything arising from it was to make sure that these enrolments didn't get the opportunity to vote in an election. Do you know if they did? They didn't get the chance. I got them taken off the roll before the election. But there may have been others that slipped through oh, the net. Oh, yes. I mean, these were the only the ones that became apparent to me from my maps and from writing letters to them. Geiger still has copies of the electoral records proving his claims that he found many blatantly false enrolments on the electoral roll. He even has proof of what many sceptics say is an urban myth. People registered to vote in a cemetery. Well, a few months before the 1989 election, an enrolment was lodged for a voter allegedly at flat one number 99 Maudsley Street, Kedron. Where's Maudsley Street? Well, Maudsley Street is up here, but the problem is the last house in Maudsley Street is number 33. If you had to work out where 99 is, it'd be somewhere around about here. <laughs> Terry Geiger says he's not suggesting any one of his then political rivals knew this was going on. But every time he raised his concerns, no one, including the Electoral Commission, acknowledged anything untoward had happened. Instead, the names he suspected of being bogus enrolments were just quietly taken off the roll. You were being treated as something of a fruit loop. Oh yeah, that's pretty fair. Um, I'd write to the Electoral Commission. Um, they wouldn't acknowledge much. They'd take the people off the roll that I discovered. And if it went public, um, the Electoral Commission would say, oh, it's just a, a minor error or it's a one in a million shot. And other people in politics, my political opponents, would come out and saying it's the desperation moves of a member who's about to be defeated. One of the intriguing things about allegations of watered elections, such as the one here on Bribey Island in the federal seat of Fisher in 1987, is that there are people from within the party who are prepared to privately admit it happened. We've spoken to one Labour insider who worked here who told us exactly what he did with fraudulent voting. We've also spoken to two other Labour insiders from another state who've described their involvement in fraudulent, systematic voting in key marginal seats in state and federal elections. Now, from the way they describe the scam, it's quite possible that neither the candidate nor senior party officials would know what's going on. And to be fair, it's quite possible that all of these people, for whatever reason, aren't telling us the truth. But if they are telling us the truth, and their claims across two states are remarkably similar, then it raises very serious questions and concerns about how they've got away with this for so long undetected. Journalist Bob Bottom has forced many royal commissions and judicial inquiries in his career investigating organised crime. But in 1992, Bob moved to Bribey Island, north of Brisbane. He took over a couple of local newspapers in the area and settled down for a quiet semi-retirement. It was not to be. What made you think that there was electoral fraud happening here? Well, like many people, I was rather ambivalent towards it all until we in our local paper here ran a small item on the front repeating allegations made at the Queensland Shepherdson inquiry. Bob Bottom's story mentioned allegations of a voting scam that took place on Bribey Island in the 1989 Queensland state election. The day we published it, two people came into my office here and said, look, that's nothing. Do you know what happened that election? We did a delivery of mail to people on the, the island pre-election and we found that there were, you know, house after house of people just did not exist. That mail-out had been done for a Labor candidate who'd got the addresses off the electoral roll. Now, there are houses strung out right along there. Now, they're all odd numbers. 
and for every home that is not numbered, there was an elector enrolled for an even number for here, where there's just water. So dozens and dozens and dozens of fictitious voters. Hundreds, virtues. actually. Hundreds. At election time, this Sea Rescue headquarters is the Ballara voting booth, one of three on Bribie Island. What Bob Bottom found was that in the 1989 state election, 879 more people had voted at this booth than at the 1987 federal election, a jump of 58%. The other two booths showed no such increase. Now, Bob, the Criminal Justice Commission, the Electoral Commission, they say it's nonsense. Well, they can say what they like. I've, I've been used to that in dealing with organised crime. The fact is, it happened here because our people did the delivery. We know it happened. Bob Bottom believes the bogus names and addresses used here in Bribie Island in that 1989 mail out may have come from electoral roll data the Labor Party still had on its computer from the 1987 federal election. So he wants a Royal Commission to investigate the sinister possibility that these hundreds of fake voters voted in the 1987 election. The 1987 electoral roll suddenly becomes a very important document indeed. You'd think it'd be a simple matter to check here at the State Library whether there are bogus names and addresses on the 1987 Fisher electoral roll. It keeps all official bound electoral rolls or their microfiche equivalent going back to the turn of the century. Except for one year, 1987. The law is very clear. The Electoral Act says that the Electoral Commission should have published new official bound copies of the Electoral Roll in the months immediately before the 1987 federal election. But that statutory requirement was waived by the Minister of the Day. Now, there were supposedly microfiche copies of the roll to be provided to make up for this deficiency. But no one in Australia, anywhere, can find a copy for us. Not any state library, not the National Library, not the National Archives, not even the Electoral Commission itself. There will be more than a few people who will be wondering why that is.